everyone, and welcome to Callie's Corner on Unfiltered Gamer. I'm Callie, and today I'm going to be sharing some of my favorite super affordable board games and card games. These are my favorite cheap board games that you can play with a lot of different people, and we feel like we've gotten a lot of replayability and playability way beyond what the price tag of these games are. As you can see, a lot of these games are smaller, but they pack a lot of gameplay into these tiny boxes. That makes them great for traveling around or taking them out with you when you're dining out. Not that we've been able to do a lot of that lately, but hopefully very soon. We also love to use these games, bring them out while we're waiting for other players to arrive during game night, or in between heavier games if someone needs to run off and do something, or just bring them out with family members or other people who may not play games a whole lot. All of the games I'm going to show you I will link in the description below so you can pick them up if you want. These are affiliate Amazon links, so thank you for supporting Unfiltered Gamer with your purchase. We use that money to help us give away games every week on our, on our website as well as on our live stream every week, Wednesday nights at 6.30 PSD. I hope to see you there. First up, I'm going to share some games that are all under, usually under $15 on Amazon. So first up we have Coup, which is a quick card bluffing style game where each player will have two different cards those are their roles and determine what actions they can play well for real you can also bluff and pretend you have a card you don't but someone might catch you out at the end of the round whoever's left and hasn't hasn't been caught or has gained enough coins to assassinate or coup and take over from the other players will win. Even though coup is a super small and affordable game, I'm so glad they went the extra step and put in the player reference boards. These player reference boards tell you every card's ability and which ability they counter. So even if it's your first time playing, you can jump right in with the bluffing. And the bluffing really makes the game. There's kind of a rock, paper, scissors mentality with how the abilities interact and some back and forth on the bluffing and countering, which is really fun that the social aspect of the game is really what makes it replayable and helps you get a lot of plays out of these games, even when you're playing with the same people, playing a few games over and over again. Next up, we have The Mind. We love this game. We love bringing it out for new board gamers or anyone, really. It's a great icebreaker game. And it's a little funny because it's actually a game in which you're not going to be talking, but that social interaction of sort of actually observing each other and getting to know each other's kind of non-verbal cues really helps actually build sort of a repertoire and get people engaged in playing games. It is super easy to teach and learn. That's one big key reason we like to bring it out with, with newer players. And as soon as you sort of lose the first time, even if you only get a couple levels in, players generally are super invigorated and want to try, play again, and beat our own score, which is a lot of fun. Next up, we have Codenames, which is a family favorite. In Codenames, there'll be a grid of a bunch of different words, and the players will be separated into to two teams where each team leader is trying to get the rest of their teammates to guess their specific words on the board without triggering the other team's words or the assassin. In Codenames, we, we love it. First of all, there's so many words in this game. There's a ton of replayability. There's additional versions of the game that are based on different themes and expansions, but the base one is great on its own and you'll get a lot of plays out of it. Additionally, I love this game because it kind of has that family atmosphere where if someone needs to go run, do something really quick, that's okay. You can kind of have people join in the game over time, makes it great for family gatherings when you don't know if everyone can sit down for exactly half an hour or an hour to play a game. Probably the smallest game on here is love letter right here. I have it in a bag and it's really just a deck of cards and a few tokens. The game is super quick and easy to learn. All you do is draw a card and play a card. 
and you're trying to end up with the highest ranking card at the end of when the deck runs out. Because of its small size and quick and easy to learn rules, Love Letter is great for traveling. It can literally just fit in a pocket, even even girl jeans pockets, which is great, or, or a purse, you know, if you wanna do that. But it's super easy to travel with, very lightweight, and actually I like the bag as far as this really tiny game goes uh, and traveling around with that. Finally in this category, we have Welcome to the Dungeon. In Welcome to the Dungeon, you and your fellow travelers are setting up and attempting to go through a dungeon. So in the beginning, you'll be placing in monsters into the dungeon, as well as removing equipment along with monsters in order to find a good balance and sort of play a game of chicken with the other players. If you're the final person left, you'll attempt to go through the dungeon with whatever equipment and monsters that are remaining and you'll see if you can defeat them. With the different character types it does have a little bit of replayability which is a lot of fun and you can play the game in rounds which makes it last a little bit longer. I also love this game for kind of introducing those different tropes of different fantasy kind of classes or roles including the warrior, the rogue, the barbarian, and the mage. This next set of games you can usually find for under about $25. So a lot of them will have a little bit more to them than the previous games, but still yet a lot of play replayability out of them. First up, I wanna talk about The Resistance. And you can see by our box that we have played this game a lot. And that's in addition to another version of the game we have, Avalon. To me, The Resistance is the ultimate trader style game. And it has just a little bit more to it than cards and that you you do have to play it around a table what i love about this game is the social aspect of it and that's what really adds to the replayability where you'll get a lot of plays out of it from one night to playing with lots of different people to see different play styles and see their game evolve over time as well up here we have the chameleon which is also a great party game in the chameleon, players will all know the certain clue a word that is on the board, except for one of the players, the chameleon, who will have to kind of adapt to what's going on around them, answer questions even though they don't know the exact answer, and try to fool everyone into thinking they do know. In addition to just the social aspect of the game, playing with different players, all of the different cards also add replayability and you can even create your own cards once you're ready to be a little creative. Down here we have Forbidden Island, which is one of my longtime favorites. Forbidden Island is a cooperative game where you're trying to shore up the island, collect different treasures, and try to escape before the island sinks totally. One of the great replayable aspects of the game are the different variable player powers and how you can adjust the level of difficulty. So once you've managed to finally cooperate together and figure out the best strategies for your characters and get off the island, you can up that difficulty level, switch around the characters and have to kind of figure it all out all over again. Finally up here we have Tiny Epic Mechs. Tiny Epic Mechs is a battle arena style game where you're going to be programming your actions and attempting to duke it out with each other and gain victory points. Like the other games in the Tiny Epic series, I love how much stuff is packed into this tiny box. You'll get these cute little meeples that have weapons and you get to put them in their little mech suits and it's a lot of fun. In this game you'll be programming your actions and trying to sort of anticipate what the other players are going to play and where they're going to be if you want to battle them or not or pick up different things and that is part of what makes it really replayable is getting to sort of pick up those different powers and abilities and weapons and also depending on the players that you're playing against. There you have it, nine games that are super affordable and super replayable. We've gotten tons of plays out of all of these games and really enjoyed playing them with either lots of different people 
or having a lot of different uh, content and replayability within the game itself. These are great picks that you can't go wrong with and let me know what you think in the description below. Did any of these really hit the mark for you as far as being just getting so many plays out of it? Are there any games that I missed that you want to share with other people? Go ahead and comment. I love reading the comments and sharing with each other, building up the board game community, and I hope to see uh, what you guys think. Thank you guys for watching another Callie's Corner video here on Unfiltered Gamer. If you made it all the way to this point in the video, please give me a like maybe even hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. You'll get to see all of our videos then. You won't miss them, which is awesome and much appreciated. Also, check out unfilteredgamer.com. We have lots of giveaways and blog content. So not just videos, but actual written blog content that you can check out, as well as joining us on our live stream on Facebook and on Twitch Wednesday nights at 6.30 PST. I'd love to see you there. Just Give a hello in the comments and like and share it and you'll be entered to win a giveaway, a board game, which is awesome. We love building the community, giving out games, and just sharing the love of board game. Well, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, I look forward to seeing you next time.